Hello and welcome to our special COVID-19 update program here on Channels Television. I'm Ladi Akre Dolwale. Here are the highlights for tonight. Federal government to unveil welfare package for frontline health workers. Lagos government says false medical information will attract prosecution of offenders. And World Health Organization denies harboring secrets from any country, says disagreements will mean more lives are lost. We start off with the good news that the federal government has for frontline workers in the fight against COVID-19. The Minister of Health, Dr. Sagi Ehanere, today announced that the federal government is working on a special package for healthcare workers. Dr. Ehanere says this package will include insurance and compensation. He also gave details on the criteria for the accreditation of private hospitals for the treatment of COVID-19. There is a special package that is being developed for frontline health workers who are in this uh, uh, activity of uh, taking care of uh, corona um, infected patients. So the PTF is working on it, working on a package that, in, that in, includes not only the uh, insurance but also includes uh, 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 compensation uh, for uh, what the work they do. So there is no neglect of the health workers at all. Uh, and the requirements for a private hospital to treat corona is very clear. Corona uh, is such a, an easily transmitted uh, disease that uh, you don't want to have it in a hospital that is not prepared for it. If you have a hospital that uh, is treating s several other cases, uh, perhaps one nurse or few nurses attending to them, you have corona in one room, and then uh, something else in the other room is risky. We do not uh, accept that. We have had some inquiries about private uh, entities who want to build totally new hospitals for that. Yes, we agree with that. Private hospital, yes. Or they want to close down one hospital and convert it for private sector treatment. Yes, we agree with that. But there are guidelines that you'll be given. You must fit the exact uh, design for infectious disease hospitals with regard to air movement and uh, ventilation and so on. Health Minister Dr. Osage Ehanere. Health misinformation is nothing new in Nigeria, but this time the Lagos State Government says it will prosecute anyone who puts the lives of healthcare workers at risk in the state. This is coming after many were found hiding their medical history or lying to healthcare workers about symptoms of COVID-19. The state governor, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, says this is putting the lives of frontline workers at risk and in turn reversing the gains recorded so far. Uh, we have taken a decision coming out of even this meeting that we're actually going to be prosecuting people. We are going to make three, four people scapegoats and examples because it's not only unfair, you are also risking the life of other health workers who, if you don't say the truth, they would, there was no way for them to know where you've been, who you've been in contact with, and what um, your previous um, um, life history or health history has been. I think it's only when the full arm of the law you know, um, touches a few Right, that they will know that it's a very serious um, matter that we're talking about. But it also has a, 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 a flip side as well, too. It's also just to ensure that uh, our health workers to also heighten their level of suspicion, right, to be sure that um, once they, they suspect any, um, they certainly would raise the alarm and um, ask that such patient um, be trans. Uh, transferred or calls be made for us to come and pick up such patients. Governor Babajide Sonwolu of Lagos State. Staying in Lagos, the government says it expects the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the state to increase in the days ahead following the introduction of the community case search strategy it has adopted. The Commissioner for Health, Dr. Akia Bayomi, says the state is improving its capacity 
for testing and treatment of COVID-19 cases by setting up new isolation centers in Etiosa and Bagada areas of the state. We have been increasing our testing capacity in line with the strategy to try and identify as many people in community with COVID-19, which is one of our strategies. Last week, or the week before the last, we tested a total of 400 samples. And this immediate past week, that testing capacity went up from 400 to 1,400 demonstrating a dramatic increase in our capacity to test and we can go even further. We're hoping to run at least two to three thousand tests in the coming week as we embark on the active case search in the community. Of course, as we test more, we're likely to see more positivity. We already know that the virus is circulating in community and the more we look for it, the more we'll find. But that is in keeping with our strategy. The more people we can bring into our isolation facilities who have been identified as positive for COVID-19, the less the virus can spread, the flatter the curve will be, and the more capacity we'll be able to throw at this outbreak. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Aki Abayobi. Now, earlier today, I had a conversation with a public health physician, Dr. Ugo Chinyere Guillo, on this issue of mass testing. I started by asking her if she was satisfied with the level of community testing at the moment. Lagos has, I, I would say, yes, they've done, they've done a very a pretty good job. But my concern is, other states. I don't know what their level of testing is. And remember that our po the population, for example, in Lagos alone is 21 million. And they're talking about, okay, they've had, they're doing 1,000 tests daily just for Lagos. Right. Now we're looking at other, other states. Remember that Nigeria is interconnected. We might say, oh, we're out of the woods for Lagos, for example. But you can have traffic going in and coming out of Lagos. So we have to look at it holistically. So if we're looking at it holistically, no. We are definitely not there yet. Because remember that we are over 200 million Nigerians. And of course, you still have the issues about the asymptomatic carriers. Right. Those are those ones we've not even addressed. Because the cases we are seeing are cases that may have presented or people who we suspect that may have the virus. So we still have that concern of asymptomatic carriers. So looking at the level of testing and our population, I'm still not comfortable. Now, that is, you're, you're having that in mind. Of course, because at this point in time, in some of the key epicenters, Lagos, the FCT, they're on lockdown. Yes. Now, that lockdown sooner than later will be over. That's true. Now, given that scenario, do you think this is going to get any easier? I'm definitely worried. Because first of all, I know that yes, we're looking at the epicenters, but remember that we have other states in Nigeria. So I like looking at it holistically, because the fact that yes, we can say, oh, Lagos might be out of the woods or Ogun State. People, you will still have people moving in, in and out of, of different states. Post lockdown, exactly, in particular. Exactly, post lockdown. And we're not talking about testing, because testing helps us identify cases, pull them out, help us trace their contacts, which is what helped us during the lockdown, because their contacts were manageable. We didn't have people, a lot of people moving around. So if those cases had moved to different areas, we could have been able to, you know, bring them up, like at least get them immediately. But now, once the lockdown is eased, we're going to have a lot of traffic. So now you can now imagine if we're now doing testing, because, which is definitely important. We have to wrap up testing. And we might have to, for example, if we get a suspected case, I'm just giving this as an instance. Right. Imagine the number of contacts that single case would have once there's an ease of that lockdown. So that's actually a cause of, that's definitely a cause of worry. That's definitely a cause of concern. So I'm hoping that, you know, the, those in charge are looking at, you know, these different aspects to know, okay, what are some measures they might have to put in place, you know, pending the ease of... Now, uh, the testing part of it also involves communities. Now, yes. in the case of Lagos, which is yeah. the biggest epicenter as yes. of now, yeah. uh, testing centers have been set up in local governments yes and people are being asked to present themselves yes. go through the counseling yes. have their samples collected yes. but it seems as if there's a bit of a misconception because some of the people i've spoken to yes. entire estates are making 
plans to visit these centers. Okay. Uh, now, please, can you enlighten us exactly what it means? It means. Okay. So now the thing about these testing centers is very good. No, definitely Lagos State did very well in that aspect, decentralizing the testing to different LGAs. Now the thing is that that testing is not just for everybody. It's for, they are like, there are certain criteria you have to meet to even be eligible for those tests. So you can go, if I, the whole estate can come in, but they might be sent back. Which is why I still go back to the issue of the asymptomatic carriers. Because, because they are not presenting, they would not be eligible for that. And of course, but even to our health workers, but we have frontline front health workers. Yes. Like in the case of you know, the health workers that you know, visited the IDP camps. Indeed. At some point, they were all visiting. You know, they were, of course, they had the active surveillance. And definitely, it's not their fault. They may have you know, been exposed. So ideally, a good thing would be even allow them to also be eligible for some of these tests. Because remember that our health workers are, are usually, they are very few compared to our population. So we want to also protect them. So we should also be looking at, we should also be looking at making sure we are getting them tested. That's not because well. that was going to, to be my question. That, now the health workers themselves yes. ought to be part of this Definitely. ramped up testing. Yes, because you know, it's, it's a worry. Look at what happened in Italy and what's happened, of course, in US and you know, Spain. Because you know, you health workers are working, they are tirelessly working you know, to protect each and every one of us. But sometimes we forget that they are also humans, they have families as well, they are going back too. So it's very important they are also being monitored. They are also being, you know, at least allowed to, you know, get in, like be part of these tests that exist. Because in that way we are protecting them and helping them do their work. And they are not also, you know, tr acting as vehicles, you know, to propagate the um, virus as well. Dr. Ugo Chinyere Igredo was speaking to me earlier on about the issue of mass testing. Now, joining us from our Buja studios is a medical laboratory scientist and chairman, Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria, FCT Rapid Response Committee on COVID-19 Containment, Dr. Kechuku Ironkwe. Now, good evening, Dr. Ironkwe. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me here. Now, uh, the process of sample collection, sample collection, testing, right up until results are sent back. How has it been? What has been the process like uh, in terms of speed, in terms of efficiency, in terms of reliability? Yeah, very well. Um, you know that the process of testing is a cascade of events from sample collection up until results. And um, of course, I must say that globally, medical laboratory scientists are designated to perform this tax. And um, in Nigeria, fortunately, we are endowed with quite a number of medical laboratory scientists who have proficiency in sampling and also in yes, testing. Uh, there are dangers, of course, of engaging people or individuals who by their training are not incidental to collecting uh, this form of this kind of fastidious uh, sampling. You, you stand a risk of self-contamination, uh, improper use of um, protective uh, equipment as PPE, and of course, processing and transporting of this sample. And um, it is important for me to also, at this point, state that there are well over 30,000 medical laboratory scientists in the country today who have proficiency in testing and sampling. And of course, they are available to render services and volunteer in this fight against COVID-19. What I find difficult is the fact that uh, NCDC have not rightly engaged the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists of Nigeria so that they can properly profile these people and make them available for sampling and testing. Thank you. Now, given, given, uh, given the issue of engagement between those who are supposed to conduct the tests uh, and those, uh, are you saying, in effect, that those who are currently conducting the tests are not members of your association or part of the engagement between the NCDC and such agencies and your association? 
yes, we have quite a number of medical laboratory scientists who are engaged. And uh, at the moment, we are saying that that number is quite inadequate and there is need for upskill and uh, increase in the number of medical laboratory scientists who are engaged in sampling and as well testing. And of course, engaging the association at this point is critical and uh, provides the opportunity for proper profiling and making available to NCDC uh, people, scientists who can perform this job. Let me, let, me ask, let me ask you about the issue of speed. Everybody is talking about ramping up the number of tests. Uh, you heard uh, the Lagos State Commissioner talking about next week doing two, 3,000 tests uh, for the week. And then in Abuja, you have the health minister and indeed other such authorities talking about increasing the number of tests that are being conducted, linking that to the issue of mass testing. In between this, there was what was called the rapid testing kits. There was a bit of controversy over the issue of rapid testing kits. Has that been resolved now? Do we actually have rapid testing kits? How reliable are they? At the moment, uh, the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, uh, who by law are supposed to validate these rapid testing kits, are on it, and they have made pronouncements that they have not validated any rapid testing kits in Nigeria. And whenever they, have, whenever they make uh, validation and they, they conclude validation, they will make available to NCDC and Nigerians and guide them appropriately on the use of rapid testing kits in Nigeria. Finally, uh, going forward, since everyone seems to be mentioning the issue of mass testing uh, as a way forward now that we've left the uh, uh, lockdown, because that is ongoing, this is supposed to be a part of it, how do you suggest that this be done? Well, we are quite happy that um, the NCDC uh, have listened to us and uh, they have quite uh, uh, utilized platforms available in the various federal medical centers, teaching hospitals across the country. And um, they are making these testing centers available we're also happy that they have utilized the HIV TB program. And uh, we're also happy that they've announced to us that they are activating 42 gene expert machines. We are quite happy that they, they've also included uh, the private sector in testing. Uh, it is very important to mention at this point that we uh, acknowledge uh, the synergy between the CDC, Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, and the Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists in Nigeria. And also, uh, it is important for us to, to note at this point that critical issues that may hamper scaling up testing should be addressed vis-a-vis uh, -vis medical laboratory scientists going to the field for sampling, of course, must be provided with the right PPE. Uh, they must also be provided with intelligence uh, because um, intelligence inter reaching us suggests that most of these communities we are sampling is done at the moment. Of course, uh, uh, creates a form of a danger uh, to the lives of these young men and women because some of them don't seem to understand the reason why uh, their samples should be collected. And uh, we are calling at this point for the synergy between the uh, CDC and the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, as at that, that point, uh, uh, my apologies for on. interrupting. My apologies for interrupting, uh, Doctor. But we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for being with us, uh, Dr. Okechuku Irongwe, uh, Medical Laboratory Scientist uh, from our Abuja Studios. Thank you for being with us. We'll take a break at this point, and when we return, we'll have more on this issue uh, of 
community testing, mass testing, uh, and the critical nature that it has. Please stay on with us. Thanks for staying tuned. Welcome back to our COVID-19 special. Before we go on, let's take uh, this uh, story. Very important uh, indeed. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sorolu, says the state government from next week intends to enforce the use of face masks in public places as part of efforts uh, to curb the spread uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think that from next week, when we think we will have wrapped up production and distribution, we're going to be asking that face masks should compulsory be worn at public places. And this is part of the deliberations that we've had to go through extensively today. And I must say that we have commissioned over a million uh, production locally from various um, tailoring companies and outfits that we have. And we intend to um, start distributing them in the course of the week. But we also must mention that people must not rush to now go and be buying the medical grade mask. The medical ones are for our medical personnel. And as you can see, myself and my other colleagues, we're not wearing any N90 face mask. We've started, you know, rebranding ourselves to wear, you know, the local made, which we believe will be adequate and sufficient and will meet, you know, um, the spirit and the era of wearing face mask. The N19 and all of the medical, waste, uh, sorry, medical mask are for medical personnel and it is really to protect them whilst they are doing the very difficult job we have asked them to do for us. From Lagos, we go to Bielsa, specifically Yenugua, it, its capital, where our correspondent, Dobra Timmy Wood, gives us an update. The reimposition of the lockdown, uh, night curfew, uh, precisely, in that state. Dobra. As Bielsa State continues to enjoy the enviable position of being one of the states in the country which is yet to have an index case regarding the coronavirus, the Bielsa State government says it will do all in its power to ensure that Bielsa State remains coronavirus free. Now, one of the measures it has put in place is to order the immediate demolition of all illegal trading centers in the state. Our problem is that making government pine way for what's pine place where you go occupy people, where people go stand and sell their market very well. Very, very bad. Nowhere to share the game. Since morning, we have been on that sun. Aside the demolition of illegal trading centers around the state, we spoke with the state governor earlier on in the day, and he disclosed other measures the state government is putting in place to ensure that by also remains coronavirus free. First, uh, what we did was to educate our people about the reality of COVID-19, uh, even in the River Rhine areas. And so uh, I personally chairs the committee on COVID-19. And uh, in the same vein, the council chairman, uh, chairman also of COVID-19 in their local government areas. And uh, we have done everything to, to take the message down to our communities, town criers, uh, and uh, other ways of creating awareness, the radio and all of that, you know, that means that we, we, we see necessary, we have used to create that awareness. And not only are we creating that awareness, uh, because of the lockdown of the state, you know, uh, by also states, it's about 80% uh, riverine. So for that reason, we have equally involved the security agencies, particularly the Navy. Yesterday being Sunday, Bielsa State began a five days docks to dawn curfew to ensure that residents of the state truly stay at home. From Yenagua, Dobra Timiwood. Thank you, Dobra. And we move from there to the federal capital, Abuja, where the commencement of uh, testing, especially in the suburbs of the federal capital territory, has meant that there's a lot of fear. And more importantly, a lot of questions from residents who, interestingly, have now reduced their movements within the suburbs. Now, joining us is our correspondent, Kayla Megua. Uh, good evening, Kayla. What can you tell us about that interesting development? 
Good evening, Ladi. Very interesting development indeed. Uh, the suburbs. I think the community testing is doing its work because uh, it's, it's beginning to dawn on maybe many uh, people in the nation's capital that you know the reason why we don't have many cases is because enough testing isn't being done. So with community testing, a lot of these cases are coming up. So that's made a lot of people in the communities to be a bit worried. You know, uh, we saw people sending us pictures of ambulances in their neighborhoods, uh, and you know they would say, "Oh, does this mean?" Does this mean that in my neighborhood there's probably someone who has the disease? Why is the NCDC in my area? So we're seeing a lot of that happening in the nation's capital. And residents, you know, maybe that's made a lot of people decide, okay, wait, maybe we should stay at home. And even suspicious of people around them. Is there someone in this area who has it and has been moving around? Am I going to be contact traced as well? So that's, uh, that's something that is happening in the nation's capital, especially in the suburbs. Another interesting thing, uh, painful thing actually going on in the suburbs is insecurity and i'm talking robberies here uh even one of our correspondents uh, friday okay who uh, was at the pta we seem to have uh, lost uh, our correspondent kayla mcbride we'll try to re-establish contact with her uh, if we can but i'm being joined in the studios here by dr jamie ganew who is a public health physician dr uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us. Yeah. Staying with the issue of community testing, which appears now to be the key and the central focus of everyone uh, who is involved in this fight. More testing, more testing, more testing. Are you satisfied uh, with how much testing we have done so far and the efforts to take it up? Actually, uh, I would like to say that I'm more satisfied with our effort to take it up. Because I was a bit worried when I saw the total number of people tested in Ghana. A Ghana with a population of 30 million has already tested 68,000 with about 1,000 confirmed cases. I was even saying, is it not possible for us to even partner, share experiences across West African countries? Instead of this idea of US, Italy, and so on. Let's even partner, form a kind of strategic partnership with our uh, neighbor, our neighboring countries. How did they get to that level? But anyway, just to, uh, to add to what you just said, I'm part of the community. Uh, I'm supervising a local government now, but I don't want to mention that. And what I realized is actually an eye opener in the sense that um, some people who were not even symptomatic came for testing, and at the end of the day, they were positive. Which goes to show Shows that, that this... it's not only that, that means that we need to review, I don't know, it's a suggestion anyway, if we can make it an open thing, voluntary, irrespective of whether you are symptomatic or not symptomatic, everybody should you know, come for testing. And this will require demand creation because people will not just come. Sorry to you know, take you back. I also participated in an active case search. Right. And it was, uh, there was a lot of revelation. One, apart from those people who declined to, uh, you know, to uh, review their status in terms of symptoms for the, uh, for the appropriate body to come and pick them, we also realized that the community, the level of awareness was very, very low. People were not practicing all those physic physical distancing. People, the issue of respiratory hygiene, people are not doing that. The issue of an IG is alien to them. Some don't even believe it. So it gives us another opportunity for us to really educate people. And at the end, that will even added and improve the demand for testing. Many of them, through that processes, people were now coming for, for testing. And in that, I don't want to mention this side. We're no, I understand. I, 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 uh, I fully and, appreciate it. And you know this, the, the most surprising thing? Out of over 100 people tested, about five people were positive, and these are asymptomatic cases. To the extent that even when they went to, you know, uh, pick some of them to the isolation uh, uh, center. Some were refused because they were surprised how they didn't get the infection. So I'm just using it as an appeal. If you can make it voluntary, irrespective of whether you are symptomatic or not. Or yeah, you are but isn't, isn't, the, isn't the restriction, if one is to use that phrase, yeah. isn't the restriction based on the fact that you have a limited number of kits with which to test uh, and so on, no. or has that is that's no, no longer that, a problem? No, that's not a problem. We have enough test kits now to treat. And even I even want to add to that again that if it is possible, since 
Some people, like the VIPs, they like going to the private hospitals. Some, out of the issue of confidentiality and privacy, they would prefer to go to the uh, private facility. How we suggest, if we can also extend some of those uh, testing sites to some private selected air facility in Lagos State, so that those people need to be but not uh, supported by the state government, maybe by... They, they would be like collection centers. Center, yes, having a collection center in some pri selected private hospital. I think that will also add to the number of uh, testing being carried out in the country. That will be sincere with us, with a population of about two, uh, 200 million, just testing, uh, having tested only 7,000. is really, really very small, very low. But even with the 7,000 that we've tested, yeah. uh, if one is to follow what has been said. Yeah. The spike we witnessed over the weekend, yeah. 51, 49, and then 86 yeah. uh, cases over those three days, yeah. we are told is an indication of that ramped up, even though, as you say, limited. Yeah. But that ramped up level of testing is what has revealed that these many people yeah. are actually hiding exactly. away. Exactly. They are in the population. Exactly. But what actually, if you listen to the Honorable Commissioner of Health, what really I did was, on this acute uh, case site, this going case site. house to house and going to health facilities are really helped. People may be raising alarm. It's, it's, it shows that the, our surveillance is working. We are really picking these people uh, at their virus community. It's not that uh, the, 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 the transmission is increasing, but it, just, uh, it shows that our surveillance system is really working. And it is good if we can sustain it so that we can take some of those people who are infected from the community and get them isolated. And I want to make an appeal. This is an acute infection. It's not a chronic thing. Within one, two weeks or so, with uh, capable ones at the isolation center, people will, 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 will get well and go back to the house. It's not a death sentence that people will be very scared of. So I think we need to create more awareness. Now, speaking uh, of the awareness vis-a-vis yes. -vis the issue of mass testing, Yes. beyond Lagos, if you go to other parts of the country, uh, some of the northern states, for example, uh, during last week, had said that they didn't have the resources uh, to enforce a lockdown because they didn't have what it would take uh, to provide what was necessary for that. But since then, many of them have now witnessed cases and you're finding that quite a number of them are doing precisely what they said they didn't have the opportunity to do yes. or they didn't have the resources to do. Does this speak to an awareness problem or is this strictly economic? Uh, I will want to look at it in... Uh both ways. Okay. In the sense that, you know, initially some say thought that uh, how many cases do you have? Just one or two cases. But suddenly when they started recording more higher number of cases, it now down on them that man, we need to do something. Like for a canoe state, just within a week we have how many cases? Thirty seven. Thirty seven cases. Yes. So and if you remember previously I've spoken in this uh, studio yes. that anything we should we are doing, every measure should be national. It should not be isolated like Lagos doing his own, uh, who state doing their own and so on. We need to have a national response. Because, for instance, you just mentioned by ESA now. It doesn't mean that it's possible there are cases, but because they are not picking them, we assume there are no cases. That's why I would suggest we can, we can make the testing voluntary so that whether you're having, you having cases or, you, or not, everybody should be tested. It will go a long way in helping in responding to this uh, uh, response. And the issue of economy, is, is affecting, it's not only in Nigeria, it's not only in the state, it's a global thing. So whether we like it or not, we have to sacrifice one thing, but the head of the citizen is more paramount when, when, when we need to compare with the economy. So I think... Dr. Jeremy Uganyu, yes, thank you so much for thank joining us much. today. Thank it's a you. pleasure having thank, you with thank us. Thank you. And now I, I'm, I'm told we can understand, uh, we can go back now to our Abuja studios where our correspondent, uh, Kayla Megua, is now able to rejoin us. Kela, before the break, we, you were pointing out that there are a number of other problems that have since reared their heads in the suburbs, particularly that of insecurity. Absolutely, Ladi. Insecurity in Kubwa, in Lugwe, which is where our correspondent, uh, Friday Craig, we had to stand with the vigilante till 3 a.m. yesterday because they have to uh, help the police to fend off these criminals. And also in Maraba, we're seeing that in Suleja as well. So this is a big problem that is going on right now. Although the, st the vigilantes in these different suburbs are holding sway uh, in collaboration with the police, of course, but it's also a situation that needs to be looked at very, very critically. 
Another problem that we're seeing uh, in the nation's capital, over 200 people, according to the task team, over 200 people have been prosecuted uh, for breaking the stay-at-home order. So it's mostly fines, and these are mobile courts. So it's mostly fines and, uh, and of course, uh, community service for the people who are breaking the stay-at-home order. So that's something that, that's a message that uh, they are trying to send out to the people of the nation's capital to try as much as possible to obey the sit-at-home order. So insecurity, community testing, making people a little bit more worried, the need for people to obey the sit-at-home order. These are just a few of the many problems that are being faced right now uh, in the nation's capital. And uh, residents that we've spoken to, we, they've even sent us so many videos and pictures uh, of situations in their neighborhoods uh, calling for assistance at this time, Laddie. Thank you very much, uh, Kayla. Uh, please, uh, it's good to know that um, compliance levels are rising now uh, with uh, the issue of mass testing and more people seeing the matter come close uh, to home. Our correspondent, uh, Kayla Maguire from our Abuja uh, studios. Now, let's remind you that the total number of COVID-19 patients that have been discharged across the country stands at 170. And that's going by figures from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC. The total number of confirmed cases as at this moment is 627, while the total fatalities stands at 21. A breakdown of the number of the total cases shows that Lagos has 376 cases, the FCT in Abuja 88, Kano has 36 cases, Oshun 20, Oyo State has 16, Edo 15, there are 12 in Ogun State, Fara has 9, Katsina 12, Bochi 7, Kaduna 6, Akwaibom also has 9, Delta has 4 cases, AKT and Undo each have 3, while Inugu, Rivers and Niger have 2 cases, with Benue and Anambra recording 1 case each. Beyond our shores, South Africa has recorded 142 new cases of the COVID-19, which brings its total to 3,300. Four more deaths have also increased the death toll to 58. The number of recoveries has increased to 1,055, but some of the survivors say they're experiencing a different kind of trauma through stigmatization. The World Health Organization has denied claims that it withheld information about the coronavirus from any nation. During an emotional press briefing at its headquarters, its Director General, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, in response to the U.S. President suspending funding to the U.N. Global Health Body last week, saying it failed to manage the outbreak properly and was too trusting of China, said the world body does not have secrets and passed information on as soon as it got them because the pandemic was about saving lives. This comes as some European countries loosened lo lockdown restriction measures aimed at curbing uh, the coronavirus. So, taking that a bit further, our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Maria Bird, joins us now uh, via Skype. Good evening, uh, Maria. Good evening. How are you? Um, I'm good enough. I hope you're keeping safe. Now, we started off by the whole idea of people uh, talking about loosening restrictions. And what's the situation in the United States? The situation right now is there are many that are requesting that many of the restrictions are lifted. And really, it's the, the shelter-in-place restriction that many are asking to be released. And so at this time, most states are in the shelter-in-place. Um, but there are many out there protesting, and they're calling for governors to open up states and to bring economy back in a stronger way than it currently is. And so uh, we know that this is definitely going to be a long road. But the real question is, are Americans going to focus more on the health issues or are they going to focus on the economic challenges that are being faced as a result of COVID-19? Now, in terms of the political structure of the United States, the governors do have some power over their states. Uh, it's not quite like the, uh, the Nigerian or other situations uh, like that. Given the fact that the reports indicate that some of the governors are reluctant to ease restrictions without getting a curve, or a handle on the curve of infections and deaths, where is the middle point? Uh, give us an update about the figures uh, as we have them now. Correct. We're looking at over 789,000 cases um, in the U.S. I mean, we're heading toward 800,000 cases. 
we're looking at over 42,000 deaths in the U.S. And so uh, the numbers are still extremely high. We're still seeing deaths happen each and every day. And so uh, the governors are really asking for and looking for more testing. Testing is going to be key as they look for ways to be able to come out of this and to really reopen everything, being able to have more available tests. And then there's a new test they're looking at is the antibody test, which is really looking to see, does someone have the antibodies to be able to handle if they are um, coming in contact with uh, the virus? And so that's a test that's very important right now. There's also some additional research being done about COVID-19 treatment using plasma. So the U.S. is working very hard as to how do we grapple with the health challenges because the death tolls and the cases are not going down. Our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Maria Bird, thank you so much for that update. Uh, to stay safe okay. out there. We'll be in touch with you during the course of the week. Thank you. And that's how we're going to wrap it up on our COVID-19 special uh, this evening. Thanks for being with us. My name is Ladi Akiri Duluali. Good night.